If I was to tell you last year that nine of the 10 top selling games were big head kart racing games, and one of the games was a dating sim, you might think that the right move is to make a big head kart racing game because they seem to dominate the sales charts. But what if I was to tell you that last year, 200 games shipped and 195 of them were big head kart racing games. One was a dating sim, one was a cooking simulator, one was a lawn mowing racing game, and uh, one of them was a painting game. Does that change your vote? Today we're gonna to talk about survivorship bias. Survivorship bias is when our data set has been filtered in some way, causing our ability to make conclusions to be corrupted. Survivorship bias allows me to use my favorite biased related image, which is this one from World War II, where analysis was being done on bombers that were returning from raids and deciding what to do to improve the survivability of the raids. The initial instinct was to add armor to all of the places indicated in red, the places where damage was occurring on the planes that were returning. But what was pointed out by a mathematician was that actually that's backwards because of course, what you were seeing with this collection of data is the damage that was survived, the damage that allowed the bomber to get back to base still. Whereas the planes that didn't return, the planes that were shot down, probably were taking damage in the places that are not indicated on the image because that would be fatal damage, the cockpit or the engines. This is a very famous image and most of you have probably seen it before, but it's a good illustration of how an incomplete data set can lead us down a road towards bad conclusions. Because our data set is incomplete, because it's already been filtered by survivorship, it's causing us to make the wrong conclusions. In video games, we see this often happening on teams when they're looking at features or even genres that are successful. You look at the top few games and see what they're doing and then draw conclusions about what works based upon that. But that's not necessarily accurate because you need to look at the broader collection of games to see what is actually a successful path. Because it could be that the top 10 games are all doing the same thing simply because it's what everybody is doing. It could be that six of the top 10 games are doing something, but actually lots of games that are failing are doing the same thing and they're just getting lucky. The other place you see this a lot is in management structure or team structure or philosophy about running your studio. When a company like Valve puts out something talking about their corporate structure, but having no producers about the way that they structure their team, it might become tempting to duplicate their structure, not realizing that there are dozens of studios that you've never heard of that had almost identical structures and fell apart along the way, in part because of those very structures. Survivorship bias can be very difficult to avoid because it isn't always obvious that we are looking at a filtered set of data. If we're just looking at the top 10 games when we're thinking about genre or thinking about features, okay, obviously there are more games than that and we even have access to that larger collection of games. When we're looking at process, when we're looking at team composition, our available set of data is restricted out of necessity. We can't really look into the structures of studios that have gone out of business because they're not around anymore. What we have access to is the small set of studios that have made it, that have made it through the gauntlet. So we have to work with the data that we have. And that's not to say that we can't draw conclusions from that data set. We just have to be careful and keep in mind that our data set is incomplete. So when we are looking at drawing conclusions, we have to not necessarily attribute to the larger data set what we're seeing from the data we have available. Special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link to that down in the description. We also have a Patreon now if you're more comfortable with that. We have merch available. This is the High Tea on the High Seas hoodie. There's a link to that down in the description as well. 
What bias or fallacy are you interested in me covering next? Have you ever fallen into the survivorship bias? Did you even notice? Because this one can be one that's very easy to fall into and then never really realize that you actually fell for it. Did you catch yourself? How did you notice before it was too late? Let me know this down in the comments. I will see you again soon. Thank you.